continued to roll back the little gun regulation that we do have, there is the ability to have greater gun regulation oh, in absolutely. the form of red flag laws that are getting more and more popular as time goes on and are more popular amongst younger generations. But in terms of you know laws that have expanded this gun violence, because gun violence has been on the rise, gun violence has been going up, it has not been stagnating. It's not a this you know, that ship has sailed, continuing to get worse. No, the ship that has sailed is is banning, reining in actual physical Reining in versus banning is you know, two different circumstances. Well, you can do like voluntary buybacks. They don't generally have a lot of success. I, would I, but we can still have regulation on gun trade yeah. shows. We yeah. can still have regulation. The thing that I want, that I'm bringing up here, and this is another thing that I have a link for, is that simply having stand your ground laws oh, yeah. increases gun deaths. In Florida, uh, which granted, we have millions of people in the state, uh, but in Florida, since stand your ground laws have been implemented, has led to an excess of 700 gun deaths a year yeah. because of the perception that, oh, I can use the justification of I fear for my life even in the case uh, even in cases where it does not apply and they still get convicted of murder, <clears throat> the p- idea that, oh, well, I was simply standing my ground leads to an increase in these deaths. Yeah. And that sort of thing and those continued laws and trying to at least go back to 2005, at least go back to 2000, at least go back a little bit, to things where it's, no, you cannot use I feared for my life as a justification for murder, for capital punishment. Those are the sorts of things that I am most concerned about. Yeah. Having simply red flag laws, having cartridge bumps, uh, and having, again, a reduction in this. There are many, many steps to go. In. So Again, I, 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 I don't necessarily want to get too heated when it comes to the conversation, but to say, well, that ship has sailed and there's- No, what I'm talking done. about is gun production and guns out into the universe. And when your country, all you manufacture is weapons and war is your business, and that's what we do, to think that we're going to stop the manufacturing of those weapons is just, it's it's- it won't happen until there's the end of our empire. It'll be the end of the empire will be when they stop manufacturing weapons. Wait, you cut so, off the supply and eventually all the guns will start to expire over time. They're not going to last forever. They need maintenance. I, you know, it, Yeah, but you, you're not going to get a warmongering empire to stop supplying weapons. You can create laws. I agree. The stand your ground. I agree with all those regulations. And just personally, I'm not a gun owner because I don't, I don't like any of that. But I'm just saying you can't be a warmongering, militarized empire that is bullying around the entire world and not expect violence at home. And when that is your number one industry, to think that it's not going to be here is just, that's what I mean. That ship sailed. We are the most violent empire to ever be on the face of the earth. And I think that that might have something to do with our with our shooting problem too, is that, you know, it's sort of ingrained in, in so many Americans' minds. Yep that they have this vigilante right to, you know, dominate over territories and over their own. It's, it's, it's psychological. I feel like to a certain degree more, you know, that, that maybe isn't as ingrained in minds, in the minds of people in other countries, you know, like Japan, I I read somewhere that the, the, like the gun violence rate of, of, ja- of like Japanese Americans who overall in the United States tend to do quite well economically is still it's like six times higher than it is in Japan, uh, you know, among like Japanese people. And it's just to say that like, it, you know, across the economic spectrum, as soon as people get to this country, something changes and they, and they become just statistically so much more likely to be involved in this type of violence. And, and so, so what is going on within the borders of our country that is not, you know, because this really is, there's a lot of issues I feel like where where things are are across the board, and this is something that we need a global effort on: climate change and poverty and all those things, war. But but this this really is such a unique thing to our country. You know, we're 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 the only country with any sort of similar level of economic development and industrialization that has this problem. So so we really have to be looking 
at like what's different here than than what we're and doing. And CJ's elsewhere. right. What's different here is the guns and lots and lots of them. I'd say though, if we want to look at the root of the problem, there are three letters to look at, NRA and all of the other lobbyist groups for guns, because this problem, if we look at it from a lobbying perspective, the same can be said for almost anything else in American society. Like we know that as Americans, our diets are horrible. That's why we're all having heart attacks and dying early. It's because of the food lobbyists. Um, our health care, way down, lower than any other country. More Americans die because they can't afford health care and the government does nothing. Why? Because of the health care industry lobbyists. When you look at the gun violence epidemic, it's because any time a bunch of kids are shot up in a school or the suicide rate goes up and people take their own lives with a gun and it gets media attention, the NRA and the other groups pump money into the pockets of politicians and say, take this money, be cute, be pretty, and shut up and don't do anything. And if you, at this point, I feel like that lobbying group has been so successful. I mean, the NRA is in disarray right now. It's bankrupt. It had to move. It doesn't have any of the power it used to, but their long-term effect is so deep. I think it will take at least two or three generations before it's undone. Yeah. They used to be a legitimate organization, just so you guys are aware. I don't know if you guys are aware. Like when I was a kid, the NRA was really just like hunting enthusiasts. It was, it was, old school conservative Republicans that like their guns for hunting. You know what I mean? But now it is literally just the lobbying arm of the gun manufacturers. So it it has changed and, and very many. Like so many of those organizations. Well, that, and I yeah. know like a lot of people that were NRA people that haven't been for years. They, they're not affiliated with that anymore because it stopped being a hunting enthusiast organization. And I think it's also important to not gloss over the, the history that our country has with marginalized groups using firearms as a, as a means of, of self-defense. Like you look at, especially in Florida, like we had something called the Ocala hunting and fishing club, which was like back in the days of Jim Crow in, in Northern Florida, that was a, a, a group of like black sharecroppers who literally had to defend themselves, their crops and their land by any means necessary against, you know, so like against tyrannical sheriffs and, and, landowners and things like that. So it's, there is a complicated and lynchings and, lynchings other sort and of all stuff. of that. Yeah. And there wasn't, and that was before the semi-automatics. And so it was when guns were not as powerful as they are now. Um, but there is a complicated history with that. The black Panthers, you know, there's so many groups that have used guns and, and there's an argument uh, on the left that says, well, don't disarm the people until you disarm the police kind of thing. Like if you're going to, if why, why should we not have guns if the cops have the gun to, with the ability to kill us? Uh, well, we'll definitely, um, CJ, we're definitely going to have to have an abolition episode. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and again, so, on, yeah. on going back yeah. to the root causes and yeah. this is to again, highlight the statement of I like having some level of gun control regulation is the access to guns to that is basically unfiltered. In states that have higher restrictions on access to guns, they have lower shooting rates per capita. They still are not necessarily as low because it is easy to go to Arizona, for example. I believe it's Arizona. Well, or, like you can go from state to state, Saint right? Louis, like St. That. Louis has the highest gun uh, homicide rate in the country, I believe. Yes, you can go and get a gun from a different state and then bring that in which is the reason why you advocate for federal regulation. Uh, but again, to, to, to say, oh, well, you know, there is nothing that can be done. That ship has sailed. Uh, again, I, I feel is. I think you're misinterpreting what I was talking about. Like, I think lots of regulations can be done. I just think yeah. in terms of banning the guns or getting rid of existing guns, that that is not going to happen. I think that there can be many regulations. Um, and I support most of them. I don't have a problem with any of that. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.